Professor, Dr. Ada Logue. I still have a few questions about your lecture on the Declaration of Independence. Could you spare a few moments? Of course, misdirected. I am willing to speak with you. Even though you are known to be a simpleton. How can I help you? Dr. Ada Logue, you said that the Declaration can be divided into three parts. My question is... Wrong. Misdirected. You stupid student. I said the Declaration can be divided into five parts. Those parts may be referred to as the introduction, the preamble, the indictment, the denunciation and the conclusion. We did not study the last three parts, since they do not express as much about the Founder's viewpoints. I did not create this analysis. I read it in the Wall Street Journal. Dr. Ada Logue, is not the plagiarism? Oh, ignorant misdirected, not if it is misquoted as badly as you just did. Besides, I cite the source and it is within the academic fair use laws. Dr. Ada Logue said that Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration, but I thought it was that rebel George Washington. How can you be wrong? Again, misdirected. How can you be so frequently wrong, you stupid sack of molecules? If you will remember my lecture, Jefferson was the primary writer of a committee assigned to the writing. You must have gone to grammar school in Great Britain, if you think that George Washington was a rebel. I prefer to refer to him and his chums as founders. Dr. Ada Logue, you said that the Declaration no longer has any legal authority. Do you not think that if we deny the old authorities we will give ourselves over to anarchy? Misdirected, how long must I bear the burden of somnambulant students? The Declaration was never intended to be a legal authority. It was and is simply a declaration of the reasons why the Founders decided to withdraw from Great Britain. Read the introduction misdirected. What does it say? Dr. Ada Logue, if I remember correctly it goes this way. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. In your own words, misdirected, in your own words. Oh, Dr. Ada Logue, um, when life with another gets too difficult you need to get a divorce. When that happens it pays to be sure that everyone else knows your side of it. You very dull misdirected. That is kind of right. But we are not referring to a marriage, but to the withdrawal of one set of people from another. We are talking about a civil war. In the relations between countries, it is important that the other nations understand what you are doing. By the way misdirected, what was the philosophical viewpoint expressed in the introduction section? Um. My dumb misdirected. The philosophy they refer to is called, natural law. When they say that they are entitled to an equal station with other countries, they base that on their reading of nature and nature's God. That is natural law. Um. My dear continuously dumb, misdirected, do you know the main premise of natural law? Dr. Professor, Ada Logue, I do not know the main premise of natural law. Misdirected, you dullard, when the founders refer to the law of nature and nature's God, they mean that there are laws which are not made by men. These laws are not made by kings. These laws were not made by governments. Therefore, none of these can change them. The men cannot change these laws. The kings cannot change these laws. Governments cannot change these laws. Who, then, could change them? They are immutable unchangeable and self-evident. Dr. Professor, Ada Logue, what is meant by truths which are self-evident? Is that like a self-proving will? Misdirected, where were you during this lecture? They mean things which are known without being told. You know that misanthrope is your equal before teachers, even though she is even a poorer student than you, and I know that is very hard to believe. Still it is easy to see that she has the same right to fail as you have. Misdirected, you silly simulacrum of a student, do you know which rights are endowed by the Creator? Of course, Dr. Ada Logue, the rights endowed by the Creator are zero since I know you are an atheist. Like all college professors? This was a trick question, right? 
Misdirected, did you used to be in films? Which of the three stooges did you play? Was it Mo, Curly or Larry? Misdirected, for the purposes of my lectures and for my students in general, I do not express my personal beliefs about the existence of the deity. You should know that, by now. We will stay true to the text, not to my personal beliefs. So, my stupidly, somnambulant and laggardly loafer misdirected, what does the declaration, itself, say are the rights endowed by the creator? Why Dr. Professor Teacher Adalog, it says that among the rights endowed by the creator are life, liberty and love. Misdirected, your lack of perspicacity never ceases to amaze me. You are unworthy of my time, your atomic structure would be better used in a different formation such as donkey dung, but I will give you my time anyway. Can you only read the first two? They are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Please tell me you malingering dog of a student, why are governments instituted in the affairs of people? Dr. Adalog, governments were started by strong men who wanted to rule everyone else. Misdirected, where did you hear that? On the internet. Haven't you learned by now to discover information for yourself? Please refer to the document. The document. The document, misdirected. To protect these rights? So misdirected, when may governments be abolished? When a government becomes destructive of those rights they were created to protect? Misdirected, that is better. However, I do not believe that you have yet understood the ideas behind natural law. Tell me, what the consequences are of the founders believing in a natural law? Um. My mental block misdirected, think. If the standards come from the outside of a person's mind, how will such a person know it? Misdirected, would you be willing to cheat on a test? Hugh. No, no, no. That would be wrong. Why? Because the school has rules against it. But, if the school had no such rules, would you still think it was wrong? Oh, yes. How would you know? My conscience. My dilatory misdirected, that is natural law and it is self-evident. Is it not? It is something you know and it was something you felt inside, not because you were taught it but somehow understood its seriousness. We could argue the psychology of this but I believe that is what the founders meant. The founders thought about their rights and the rights of others in the same way. That there were some rights that governments could not give nor take away. Misdirected will you please summarize our discussion up to this point. Be sure to think it through so that you fill in some of the intellectual gaps we have left. That is if you are able to think some for yourself. I'm teacher, professor, doctor, e dialog. I believe it will go like this. First, the declaration has five distinct parts. They are the introduction, the preamble, the indictment, the denunciation and the conclusion. While we did not discuss the last three parts, we did discuss the first two. The first of these parts is used to explain why the founders wrote the declaration and to introduce to the nations of the world that the founders were well read about the philosophies of government. The second was there to explain that whether they were born in Great Britain or in the colonies they were all people and that people have rights which come from the natural law. The natural law was a barrier to governments, because they could not make laws which contradict the natural rights. The founders thought that government was created to protect rights which the government could not lawfully take away. Rights that the people could not even give away. Further, if a government started ignoring its responsibilities or worse started invading these rights of the people, then it is the people's right to do away with that government and create another. Finally, the governments are created to protect these rights and these governments derive the powers they are entitled to from the people who are subject to the government. Is that right? My dear, darling, student, star of learning, follower of the muses, you have exceeded my hopes and expectations for all students. Yes, 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 that is right. Will I now be able to know how to vote? Only if you learn how to apply what you have learned to today's problems and issues. And for you that still seems to be anyone's guess as to whether you will learn that. By the way misdirected, I am curious about your accent. You sound as if you grew up inside a computer like it was computer-generated. Am I right, 
M M